Hi Scorpio, welcome to your end of March 2017 general tarot reading. It's Rena here and so before I lay out the cards I just wanted to kind of review this retrograde in Venus and how it affects you because there's a common thread between the Venus retrograde and the new moon which both are in Aries and through the month of March Venus will be retrograding in Aries and then eventually going back into your fifth house of Pisces in early April. But for this portion of uh, the month of March, it will be in Aries. So it's going to be going backwards in your sixth house. And uh, this is your house, house of health and the workplace and um, what else that... Your daily schedule is part of this area. And um, with Venus here, um, it's like a review and it has to do with issues surrounding your values, um, money itself, or your relationships. So for some of you, you may be dating somebody in the workplace and have perhaps have another partner that you know you just met maybe there's two people in your life and you're not sure which one um to choose or to be with or maybe you don't want to be with either one when the retrograde's over with but it could have to do with compensation i was just dealing with another sign i can't rem remember which one but it was a similar thing However, with them, it was more of the 10th house, so it was more of career matters. This is really kind of the nitty-gritty. Um, you may even have issues with coworkers, and you're kind of reevaluating whether or not you want drama in your, in your life. Um, maybe there's been a lack of harmony in your workplace, and that has been weighing on you and so you're thinking should i just go it alone and, and work for myself and then i don't have to deal with this so i mean obviously it's going to depend on the person you know compensation issues is a big one versus working for yourself and um yeah and then you have a new moon on march 27th in the work sector so that may kind of make your you know show which direction you're going in which is, you know, maybe choosing a whole new workplace altogether. So it sounds like there's a lot of um, practical energy. And it could be, you know, with health issues too, new direction in your health. New beginning, I should say. I'm doing a modified Celtic cross spread this time around. And this is a general focus, so anything goes. Okay, so the kind of the overall theme for this period of time is the Four of Wands. This can deal with marital issues, happy home. Um, you know, you have a transit of Jupiter in this sector, the seventh house. You know, recently it, it has gone retrograde itself and will be retrograding until June. So there may be some kind of review of that. Maybe you have been engaged and you've been wanting to get married or committed in an official way. And that's been put on hold, especially with this Venus retrograde. Maybe there's kind of like other people uh, or you're having second thoughts. But this could be, uh, so this could be family, but this could be like, Closing on a home. Uh, where's your fourth house? I'm just trying to think if there are any issues related to your fourth house that may be causing. Well, you've had recently 
um, you know, in Aquarius, you've had um, a new moon there. So possibly, you know, some of you may have gotten married or closed in, on a house in um, late January or so. So for some reason, this is up for scrutiny, your home life doesn't have to be, you know, a marriage situation. Maybe it's your children or maybe it's the physical home. In some cases, it can indirectly relate to career because you may be having, maybe you're saving for a house and you have that goal in mind and you're tolerating a job that you really don't like so that you can pay for this house. And it's just one of those paradoxes or almost what I would call a trap where, you know, you want something really badly, but in order to get it, you have to sacrifice so much that in the end, is it going to be worth it? You know, it could be one of those deals too. What crosses you, so this is kind of like what may be kind of creating problems in achieving that happy home, five of swords. Um, you may have issues. Now, this could be even like family members who are poisoning the well, who are talking uh, badly about you. In the workplace, the same thing. And this may be the, maybe you're dealing, just like I said, um, with Venus in the sixth house retrograding. Maybe there's disharmony in the workplace. And if it wasn't for these people, you would be able to tolerate working there. Um, maybe it's the people that are making it hard. And there's some kind of treachery involving other people and your happiness or your well-being. Now, this could also be an empty victory. That's what this also represents. So if you have wanted a, a partner and they were already taken and you disrupted their family... It might you might realize maybe you do get that person, but you realize that the cost was very great. Maybe it kind of hits you, um, you know, in your in your face that you like blowback that you had done something that you got what you wanted, but then you realize that you hurt other people in the process. And if you did something like that, you know, don't beat yourself up because you were just trying to attain happiness. And sometimes, you know, people need these wake-up calls, you know. And it's only when everything plays out the way that they had hoped it would that they see that it wasn't really worth it. it you know, um, it, you know, one, I was just thinking of something that's kind of funny because... Sometimes people love um, extramarital relationships because there's the for forbidden fruit syndrome. And then once they get the person and it's like they don't have to sneak around anymore, it loses its fun because there's no intrigue. You know, there's nothing. Uh, Scorpio loves to be mysterious and slink around and, and, you know, do things covertly. But it may not, when everything is above board and... It may not be that alluring anymore. And then I there's a card that represents the root cause of all of this, and it's a judgment card. So this is kind of going along with what I just said. Now, this could be actually a legal judgment where um, someone got divorced and now they're with you, but you may have felt that you were not playing fair in this thing after all, or you should have done something differently. This is also a card of the chickens coming home to roost, of, um, you know, cause and effect catching up to the people involved. And, um, you know, sometimes what this could represent too, maybe, is, you know, you have been married and that person did to you what you did to the last person that you were with. So you're getting a taste of your own medicine. Maybe somebody has been cheating on you. And maybe they've been lying to you and now you have to know how it felt because you did the same thing to somebody else 
a long time ago. Judgment card can be about rebirth, about your life um, being purified. Uh, one of your ruling planets besides Mars is Pluto. Pluto is this. I think Pluto is connected. I don't know. It's connected to the tower, I think. Or is it connected to this? I would think it would be connected to this because there is this purification. I'm not sure. But whatever it is, it's like karmic, it's karmic justice. Cosmic justice. It's cause and effect. It's very simple. Um, and it you know, it could be that you're at the you're the innocent party. And maybe you need to understand that, um, you know, you never need to, to, to be, to mourn the loss of a, of a marriage or a happy home because someone came in between your marriage. It, it's not like that, you know. There are other factors that contribute to the situation and you should you know, look at the bigger picture and not focus on betrayal or somebody um, kind of going behind your back. Maybe it was somebody who was a friend. Maybe it was somebody you trusted and, and they came and your happy home myth was shattered. Um, but there may be a sense of like wanting justice for that and that is something that is beyond your pay grade you know that's a spiritual thing and uh you know let god handle that one but in in um i'm seeing this more in the relationship area this reading but obviously there could be things that are connected to um your your job and as I say, I think a lot of that is a sacrificing uh, so much for the illusion of the happy home or trying to buy a home. And, um, you know, feeling that you're not sure if it's worth it. The judgment card is talking about rebirth. And of course, you are going through Venus retrograde in the sixth house. So that may make things more clear when Venus goes direct mid-month and then it revisits that, that sector. Um, so let me just keep going. And we have in the recent past, we have the Four of Pentacles. So um, this is somebody who is really holding on to their money. And this is what, when I was saying that about working for a house, this would go along with that, maybe pinching pennies, trying to... Um, save for this goal and um, this person can sometimes is holding on too tightly to their resources and so when you hold too tightly you know the energy can't circulate and maybe that contributed to the problem because you were too focused on one thing and it was like you're putting all your eggs into one basket and that's what happened um, also this can be um, an earth sign individual who figured into this, I mean, even if it was like a private relationship. So it's Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. I would say Capricorn because we're getting, um, like in the current position, we're getting a card that's associated with Capricorn, which is the devil card. The devil card deals with materialism. So along with that four of uh, pentacles, there may be an over overemphasis on, on the money aspect of something. So in the workplace, being too concerned with that over your well-being may end up being a bad, um, you know, end up not being a good way to think about things. And um, in your private life, this could be about a relationship that's based on sex rather than love, on materialism, you know, marrying for money, marrying for, um, you know, marrying for the wrong reasons. And, um, 
and not being happy as a result. Now, even that, that four of um, wands, that could be a card that's related to, um, wow, th this person can give me this, you know, because I'm really in love with somebody else, but they don't have, they don't have enough money to buy a house. I've always wanted to have a big house. When I articulate it like that, some people may think that it's silly, but people do really think like that when they go into relationships. And I'm not here to tell people, you know, what to value in a relationship, but don't be surprised if you do think like that, that the relationship ends up being based on uh, surface things. That love isn't really kind of acknowledged in the relationship. It's just the outer things. If it's a sexual relationship, it's an obsessive thing. It's something that you have a hard time giving up. And this, again, um, maybe it's the other person who is, if it's your partner, maybe they're having a hard time giving it up. Maybe they have a compulsive need for um, sex. They're maybe they're sex addicts. Um, if it's you, maybe you are hooked into this person on that level and that's it. But it's like destroying everything else around you. Your life and other people's lives. But you can't, you have a hard time giving it up. Um, in the near future, we have the Queen of Swords. This is a, uh, the combination of feminine and masculine energy. Um, you, it's the, it's the, it's in, intuition meeting intellect and being able to understand a problem in its totality on all levels and being, being um, emotionally detached enough to be able to make the right decision, not being clouded over with emotion. So even if you're the one who is having this relationship that is compulsive, I think you'll be able to stop. I think you'll have a moment of clarity. If you are um, in a job and, and you're just doing it for the money, I think that either you will be able to tolerate it and it won't get to you emotionally because you know it's just a means to an end and that you have like a goal in mind that you want to accomplish and you won't allow any office politics to suck you in and you know make you you know anxious or agitated because other people are talking behind your back and trying to scheme against you things like that mentally your consciousness is in a state of, I think you're fighting back. And I think that you emotionally, you have this resilience and you're not um, taking it anymore. You're standing your ground. And you're, if somebody's trying to uh, accuse you of something you didn't do, you're not going to let them get away with it anymore. Maybe you made that mistake. You, maybe you tried to get along to um, go along to get along for whatever reason. Well, the reason would be harmony. Maybe you wanted to be a, a team player, so to speak, but the rest of the team is secretly against you. In your private life, the same thing. If you're, if you're dealing with somebody who's cheating on you, you're going to tell them about it. You're going to tell them how you feel. You're going to maybe consult a lawyer. A judgment card could be that there's already been a judgment, but... Um, it can still be, yeah, it would be more like, it wouldn't be consulting a lawyer. It would be more like you're going to defend yourself against people, maybe who claim that you broke up a marriage. Or on the flip side, you're not going to allow a spouse to, you know, blame you for the reason the marriage broke up or whatever, to use you as a, a, as a scapegoat. And so you're going to feel empowered in some way. Now, in as an outside influence, we have the Nine of Swords. So somebody around you may be feeling very 
um, anxiety prone. This may be the uh, a person uh, who maybe your spouse, if your spouse has been cheating on you, they may feel like um, they're having anxiety attacks, that they can't function. But this is mostly, it would probably be more like anxiety attacks at night. This is a card of insomnia, and usually you associate that when, you, when you've wound down for the day, you don't have anything to do. That's when the anxiety starts to hit for some people. But that might be their conscience talking to them. Um, maybe if... Um, and maybe, you know, if you're dealing with, if you have some open enemies at work, um, they may, there may be one person out of that group who doesn't like what's happening and they can't, they feel like they're stuck. They feel like they don't know what to do because they knew, know that you're being done wrong. But for whatever reason, they're too chicken to, you know, defect and, and go on your side and defend you against all of them. You know, they're too weak to do it, but they're suffering privately. Um, the higher message or what may be coming in for you as an influence is the star card. You may have, there may be um, people from your family, um, who have, who have, um, you know, departed from this world who are helping you from pulling some strings, making some things happen. Um, it could be that you just feel a sense of renewal because you're obviously experiencing a lot of changes and, um, maybe you could say stress, um, with some of these cards. These are not, some of these cards are not very, um, placid, you know, peaceful. And you, in the midst of all of that, you feel a sense of renewal and hope. So something is happening. And some of these are past influences. So you may, the worst may be over for a lot of this stuff. And you're feeling like very hopeful for some reason in the future. Now this card is associated with Aquarius. So, and I should have said that could be an Aquarius in your life. Um, and that person may be a part of your life. And this could be even saying, this is the person who has your back, who's in your corner. Maybe you've kind of like um, taken them for granted. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a romantic partner. It could be anybody who um, wants the best for you and wants you to be happy and you may be so focused on your own life that you're not realizing the blessings that you have with the support that you have because you're not you, maybe you feel like I'm not getting what I want so why should I be happy but you really do have a great support system around you and it might not be that many people but the people that are there are people that really care and are loyal unlike some people, right? And the end result is the six of pentacles. This can indicate um, when somebody gets a, like a payout, uh, you know, this could be if your spouse, if you're div getting divorced, like the judgment card, you get this alimony or you get like some kind of the distribution of the assets and maybe you're the one that, you know, is in need of the money more than the other person. Um, it could indicate that you receive money from another source, like you benefit from it. Uh, in some cases, if you're in a financial situation where you have the means, you may be helping out somebody else. But it's also about parity. And I think I touched upon this in terms of a financial compensation in the workplace because I mentioned Venus and you know retrograding in that sixth house and Venus can be about money and so it's like am I getting what I'm worth well first you have to believe that you're worth um, more than what you are being treated like you're worth and then you get there but it sounds like you're going to get there and 
This may not be within this time period, but eventually Venus will go back into sixth house and it may, that might be the time when things straighten out for you. That would be later in April. So Scorpio, I hope you enjoyed this. If you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. Um, also, I, I wanted to say with the Six of Pentacles in a personal relationship, it could mean that um, you finally, you know, meet somebody that you can have an equal relationship with. Maybe sometimes you've had a tendency to be too giving, you know, and I don't like to use the word too in front of giving, but um, sometimes that can be what's happening, you know, and then the other person, it tends to attract people who are takers. Um, so anyway, if you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. Otherwise, have a great uh, rest of March. Bye.